Hey everybody, Jarek here. Every month I have a sub goal on my Twitch. If we reach that sub goal, I stream a game that you guys have heavily requested. Well, we reached the sub goal this month and you guys wanted me to stream a game called Exodus from the Earth. But this and Chaser are the two games that I have enjoyed by far the least out of everything I've done. They've been the most annoying, infuriating, mind-numbing, bullshit games I've ever seen. People really like watching me suffer. I have covered some truly bad games on this channel. I have covered games that are clearly not finished, like Hunt Down the Freeman, that shits all over franchise we all love, like Half-Life. And I've covered games that are objectively better, but result in an even more tedious, frustrating experience like Chaser. Chaser was that game that I would have rather played any other game instead of this game. Yes, including Hunt Down the Freeman. We've reached a new low. Every hour I streamed this game felt like five. It's miserable. So where do I even begin? Right away you can tell that this game was not made with English in mind. The lip syncing is horribly off and the voice acting is abysmal. It's almost worth possibly thinking about playing this game just for how bad these cutscenes are alone. I guess this should be expected, this was made by a Russian studio called Parallax Art Studio and was released in 2008. Since then it got a release on Steam where it sits at a whopping $15, 11 years after release. Why is it $15? The story takes place in 2016, which is always interesting when a game comes out and they make a story that's supposed to happen in the future and then you're playing it in the future and it's actually happening in the past. It's kind of like how Time Splitters 2 set Neo Tokyo in 2019 and here we are in 2019. Except for, you know, that game was actually good and not shit. The name of this game is accurate. Apparently, the sun is going to turn into a red giant much sooner than anticipated, as in, in just 20 years and the Earth is going to become uninhabitable. But don't fret, the AX Corporation has found a solution. The AX Corporation is the largest enterprise dealing with genetics, space, and military. They are in possession of a mineral found on a distant planet, from which mineral they can derive a vaccine that allows humans to survive in any environment. Ignoring the fact that this is completely illogical and not possible, we move on. Obviously, this corporation is trying to bank on this quote-unquote discovery, and, you know, maybe they're doing something really shifty, or maybe they're just trying to save humanity. Who knows? While this is going on, an astronaut apparently finds another Earth-like planet, but before he can tell people where it is, he disappears. And people assume that the AX Corporation have silenced him, which to me just sounds like America's healthcare. This is where your character steps in. Your character is tasked with infiltrating the AX Corporation headquarters and figuring out what's going on. And from this point on, basically nothing happens till the ending cutscene. Keep in mind, all of this is told to you within the opening cutscene, with bad voice acting and bad lip syncing. And you just don't get any more information. That's pretty much it. You do meet a few characters along the way, but they don't actually push the story forward at all. They're just there to help you throughout the building. One of them works for security, and this leads to the best cutscene I've ever seen in my life. And it would have been even more difficult if I hadn't reprogrammed the computer's memory block. Is it really so easy? Yeah. <laughs> But I need to install it here. This voice acting. Help me get it. I hear Wait. something. Check it out. Wait, Mike. Frank, it's close. Mike, no. I got one, three. <laughs> <laughs> it's him. Oh my God! Perfect time for bits. Graphically, it's subpar. This is a game that came out in 2008, we saw plenty of games that look much better than this before this one, like Call of Duty 4 or Hell Crisis, which, eh, Crisis is not really a fair comparison, you're trying to compare Crisis to a budget game, but, you know, there's plenty of other games that look better at the time. I think the biggest problem this game has graphically is that it's very clearly inspired by Half-Life 2 and just looks worse than Half-Life 2. But as far as a PC release goes, I don't actually have many complaints. The graphics are slightly subpar, but, you know, they do the job fine. I'm not going to complain too much about graphics that aren't that great. Gameplay is where shit really hits the fan. It's the most tedious, frustrating, annoying game I have ever played. As I said, every hour felt like five. It usually takes me two streams to beat a game. This game took me four days, with one of those days being me just saying, I really don't want to play this game, and procrastinating it till the next day. What I really did that day was just go play the new Call of Duty game instead. We live in a world where a shooter that came out in the late 2000s, kind of a golden era of shooters, was awful, and the new Call of Duty game that came out in 2019 is amazing, doesn't have loot boxes, and is releasing new content for free. And EA just released a Star Wars game that's apparently good and sold well. What a time to be alive. Before I lay into this game, let's talk about things that are actually good. 
There's not much, but there is some stuff that does work. For example, the weapon designs are pretty cool. The assault rifle looks like the South African Vector. It's not, but it kind of looks like that, and I've always loved that assault rifle and thought more games should actually use it, which none really have to my knowledge. But the assault rifle in-game is an assault rifle with a grenade launcher that is a reloading animation that can be cancelled in case you don't actually kill them with it. It's fully automatic, and in general it's just a good utility weapon that looks pretty cool. The assault rifle's reloading sound effect is the same as a G2A2's reloading sound effect in the original Fear, which, I mean, I guess is a plus. I love Fear. The shotgun is a triple-barreled shotgun that acts kind of like a DP-12, except for you can fire all three barrels at once if you want to and that's pretty awesome. Keep in mind the DP-12 came out after this game so this game technically did it first. So yeah the weapon designs are overall pretty unique and have a good art style to them. The music is okay, some of the songs sound pretty good although they get a little annoying because they're the same loop over and over and over again so their charm wears off rather quickly. And uh, yeah that's pretty much all I got. The rest of this game is just fucking garbage. These weapons look cool but they feel fucking terrible. All of them have ridiculous amounts of recoil that you cannot control at all. It doesn't look to be a high caliber assault rifle, yet when you try to fire it in game it feels like your character is an anorexic drunk meth head. The shotgun's pretty much the only thing that reliably kills because you're firing three shotgun shells at once it better kill them. Not even the rocket launcher reliably kills people. What? Hold on. Fuck all of you. Are you for real? For real? The enemy AI is stupid as shit, they either blindly run at you in a straight line without doing anything I got you. Do you though? <laughs> <laughs> or they're just aimbots Apparently I can't, what the fuck? What was that? To make things worse, these enemies are rather bullet spongy unless you shoot them in the head, which is easier said than done with how much recoil is in this game and with how much you flinch when they shoot you. Even worse, you're basically fighting the same enemy the entire game. After about 80% of the way through the game, you do get one new enemy, but that's still only two different types of enemies. Oh wait, I'm sorry, you fight a few robots, but those are like four in total throughout the entire game. Yet yeah, this game is rather repetitious. The difficulty is also all over the place in this game. One moment it will be easy as hell, the next moment it will be impossibly difficult. It does not have a difficulty curve, it has random difficulty spikes. At one point I just said screw this and put it on easy difficulty and I still had the same problems. But the easy parts just became incredibly mind-numbingly easy and the difficult parts just were slightly less bullshit. I didn't care, I just wanted to get this shitty game out of the way faster. But those are amateur problems, you'll see those issues in about every budget title ever. That's not what will make this game the worst shit you'll ever play. The first problem you'll notice right away. The map design is fucking terrible. Yeah, it's one of those games. It's one of those where the fuck do I go games. The maps are often laid out in a way that are basically mazes so you never know where to go. What you need to do in those maps is incredibly cryptic, or even when the maps are simple hallways, they make it so that you still somehow get lost and don't know what to do. This game has a major copy and paste problem. Every level looks the same from start to end. Some other good games have done this and gotten away with it, like say Halo Combat Evolved, but that's because Halo Combat Evolved gives you landmarks to kind of figure out where the hell you are. This game doesn't. This is a game where you legitimately can get lost in a hallway. How do you get your players lost in a hallway? To make things even worse, when you do get stuck, oftentimes it's something very simple that the game is not communicating to you well at all. Oh, that lever hidden way the hell over there in the dark? You're supposed to pull that. You probably walked by it about a million times and never saw it. The game devs do nothing to make you look the direction that you need to look. And it's really easy to overlook things that should be in the open, but there's no light over there. Or there's nothing to draw my attention in that direction. Again, you have made a game where players that have been playing shooters their entire lives are getting lost in a hallway. And it's not just going to happen once or twice, it's going to happen all the time. Or maybe they'll just throw in some cryptic bullshit for the sake of throwing in cryptic bullshit. Here's a great example. I got stuck in a hallway, shocker, trying to figure out how the hell to open a door for a good 15 to 20 minutes before I gave up and just looked up a walkthrough. The solution pissed me off. Throughout the entire game you had been seeing these posters. They meant absolutely nothing. They were just textures on the wall, nothing more to do with them. But in this one case, you're supposed to open a poster and find a key. Why would I ever assume to do that? Literally nothing in the game before told me I can interact with these. Why should I assume that I need to interact with this one? And then you never do ever again in the rest of the game. Either A, they had no one playtest this game, B, they were intentionally trying to pad out the game's length, or C, all of the above. 
I skimmed through my VODs. It took me around seven and a half hours to beat the game. You know how much of that was me wandering around trying to figure out what the hell to do? Two and a half hours out of seven and a half hours was me being lost. That's not the worst part about this game though. The worst part about this game is that it softlocks itself all the time. There are so many situations in this game where I literally could not continue until I either restarted the game or loaded a previous save. For example, here's a keypad I can't even interact with. I know the code, I know it's 135, I have to get in there to grab some mines, I can't do it because the game won't let me. After a while I gave up and tried to put in console commands so I could just no clip through the wall. I edited in any file so now I could access the console commands, just to find out that this game doesn't even have a no clip. To make things even worse to even use console commands, you have to also put that in the any file. Why would you make it this way? I was close to the end of the game here and I was really tempted to just straight up give up. But when I exited the console commands after I restarted the game having to make them work to begin with, the keypad finally just worked for no reason. Restarting the game I guess fixed it. That's not a true softlock though, that's the game just glitching out. Here's a better example. Here's a force field that I can't walk through. I can drive through it, but I can't walk through it. Except if I'm already inside of it. I can drive into this force field, walk out of it, and now I can't get back in. And now my car is stuck in there. This whole section of the game is blatantly ripped off from Half-Life 2's Highway 17, except for done much worse. You need the car to progress, and you can get it stuck in this force field, and you can't get to it. To make it even worse, if you flip this car over, there's no way to flip it back over, leaving you fucked. It's like the devs don't even understand why Highway 17 worked. In this game, every five feet, there's a roadblock that you have to get out of your car and get out of your way. Sure, in Highway 17, there were a few roadblocks, but they're every five feet in this game, as I said. Highway 17 worked because it allowed the players to go at their own pace. They would occasionally see a house off in the distance and go, that looks interesting. They'd go and explore it and find something that you may have not even known was there the first time you played through the game. On top of all of that, this section in Exodus from the Earth lasts for hours. It's needlessly long with a car that handles like absolute garbage and is not fun to drive. Let alone the amount of ways you can lose your car and just kind of end up being screwed without the game even restarting. It's just, you're softlocked. You can't do anything. These are only a few examples. There are many, many times you have to load again because the game is not allowing you to progress. And the worst thing about this is that you never know if the game is fucking up or you're just not seeing what cryptic bullshit it wants you to do. Thank God for the singular playthrough I found on YouTube showing me exactly what to do with every video only having like 200 views. This person is a hero. Without him, I probably would have given up. I was not kidding when I said this is one of the most frustrating, miserable gaming experiences I've ever had. I could go on and on, but for the sake of not making this video 10 hours, I guess I'll stop here. Oh my god, stop bitching. The game is 10 years old. Who cares? Why is this a comment I get? If the game was shit 10 years ago, it's shit now. Are you saying that old games are just invalid and we shouldn't enjoy them or hate them anymore? Are you saying that we should just forget the aliens colonial marines happened in 2030? No, shut the fuck up. Sorry about that, there are some comments I get on this channel that I just truly don't understand and really get on my nerves. But, I saved the worst for last. Remember when I said the story basically goes nowhere from the starting cutscene to the very ending cutscene? Well the ending is the worst fucking ending I've seen in any game. It makes Far Cry 5's ending look amazing. Well towards the end of the game, you go to the planet that the AX Corporation owns, the planet that they're getting the materials for to make this vaccine that's supposed to save the human race and you find out the vaccine is just hard drugs. They're just trying to get everyone addicted to basically control the human race. This results in, like I said, the worst ending I've ever seen in any game of all time. It's, it's impossible. How did you get to this other planet suddenly? Bravo, Frank, but I'm surprised you're alive. I came here right after you. While you were passing through the complex, I was keeping my eyes on both you and Crisby. When you established the connection, I could get into the complex security system quietly and secretly. I only needed the formula, and here it is. It's all about power? Of course. I will be the new Noah. The king of the epoch. The lord. Well... I guess you don't need a witness. Right. I've readjusted the bomb to my cardio code. When I fly away, the signal will stop and the reactor will explode. <laughs> it was nice to deal with you, Frank. I... Oh. I'm nearly sorry. Boss, what if you die? 
Will everything be blown sky high? You are a dreamer, Frank. But, in fact... Well, yes. I'm also nearly sorry. <laughs> Terrible fucking writing. He just ran through a box. And everybody dies. That's the end of the game. Are you fucking for real? Jesus Christ. <laughs> what a fucking awful game. I have no words. But this is the worst story and the worst game I've ever played. I was genuinely mad. I had low expectations and I still was upset. At least at first. My second thought was, thank God I'm finally done with this pile of shit. I can move on with my life. I hope you guys have enjoyed this video for my sanity's sake. And I hope you enjoyed watching me suffer over on Twitch. I looked at my analytics and a whopping 75% of people that watch my videos aren't subscribed. And only 13% of people that are subscribed click the notification bell. So consider subscribing if you like this content. It really helps me out. It means I don't have to rely on YouTube's recommended to get views and you'll get to see all my videos as soon as they get released. But that about sums it up. Thanks to all of you that watch me over on Twitch. If you want to go check out my Twitch, my Twitch is twitch.tv slash jarek gamingdragon If you subscribe, you get to see my videos one day ahead of time. Same thing for my Patreon. Thank all of you guys for watching this video and I'll see you next time.